You are watching Ubuntu Boot Camp Part 2. In this episode, I am going to show you how to make live mediums such as a live CD or DVD or a live USB stick that you can use to boot Ubuntu and try it out on your system without even installing. And that learning begins right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Okay, before I begin, there are some links in the show notes you're going to need to take a look at. First, you're going to need to get Ubuntu. And so I have a link to Ubuntu's webpage where you can download Ubuntu Desktop. And from here, by clicking on Ubuntu Desktop, you can select the version that you need. Now, if you know that your processor support 64-bit and you have more than 4 gigs of RAM, you'll definitely want the 64-bit version. If you don't know what type of processor you have, you might as well go with the 32-bit version. Once you've selected the one you want, just press to start download. Also, you are going to need the universal USB installer, easy as one, two, three. There is a link in the show notes to this page. Just simply download this file to your desktop, and I will show you how to create that USB stick. Next, if you're going to be making a live CD or DVD, you may want to visit this page and get a copy of All Free Disk Burner. I happen to like this application because it does the job really well. And interestingly enough, it even works in Linux under Wine. So it is an awesome tool for burning ISO images and creating audio CDs, your data CDs or DVDs, your compilations and that sort of thing, all in a nice, slick, and easy-to-use interface. Now, after you've downloaded your uh, Ubuntu live image, you are going to need to check the MD5 sum to ensure that you do not have a corrupt download. Now, this page gives you a link right here where you can download the file you extract it to your desktop and then of course you will need this page's link so that you can compare the md5 sum hash to uh, the image that you downloaded before we burn our iso image to a dvd or create a flash drive we need to check the md5 sum in the show notes below, you will see this hash listing. And what this is, is the MD5 sums for all of the images that are available for you to download. In this case, we downloaded the Ubuntu 12.04.1 desktop i386 ISO. So, once you've extracted the zip file that you received for the MD5 sums, all you have to do is just drag this on top of the md5 sum executable and a command prompt will open up and it will generate an md5 sum in this first part of this tutorial i'm going to show you how to make a live dvd or cd this is actually small enough to fit on a cd using all free disk burner now it doesn't matter which disk burning utility you use but i happen to like this utility the best uh, it also works beautifully in linux under wine and uh, actually when i made my first transition over to linux i didn't really care that much for prezero because it was making too many coffee coasters so i used this in wine and it works beautifully so i'm going to select under more tools iso burner a druid will pop up asking us to take some steps. Now, of course, we're running Windows, so we're going to select the SPTI version. It's going to check for the device, and there it is. We're going to press Next, and then we're going to select where this image 
it resides. In our case, it is on the desktop, and we'll select the ISO image here and select Open. Press Next, and then the burning mode, track it once, is fine. Now, this is critical for me. What I like to do is I like to select Send Optimum Power Calibration, and then I will choose the slowest burning speed. For some reason, I notice I get a better burn if the burner is actually burning slower than having it running at its maximum speed. So I always choose the slowest speed for this reason. Okay, and then we'll just press next to start burning. Then, of course, this will go through the process of burning this image to disk. Now, something I would like to mention. When booting from a live CD or a DVD, you're going to notice that you will be able to run the operating system, but the performance may not be that fast. So, with that being said, a lot of people like to burn or place their images on a live USB stick for faster performance. But this option is available to you if your computer does not have the ability to boot from USB, then the only way you're going to be able to try this is by using a live disk. So, at least by having both of these methods here, you'll be able to, one of these two methods will allow you to test out the operating system before installing it on your computer. Once the burning has completed, click Next, and then Finish. That's all there is to it. Very easy, huh? Depending on the disk burning software that you use, once your CD or DVD has finished burning, it should automatically eject itself from your computer and it should be ready to go. Next, let's go ahead and have a look at how you can create a bootable USB stick. This will be handy for those of you who are able to boot your computer from your USB port. Most newer BIOS support this, so if your computer is at least four or five years old, you should be able to boot from the USB, but in the event you're not, the CD or DVD will be useful to you. Okay, first make sure that you have your USB drive plugged into your computer, and then we're going to fire up the USB, the universal USB installer. We're going to go ahead and press run on this, and press agree. Now, we need to select a Linux distribution from the drop-down to put onto the USB. Now, the nice thing about this is you do not actually have to download the image from the Ubuntu website. This program can download it for you. The only thing is I do not see the 12.04.1 version available. So, I'm just going to go ahead and select Ubuntu 1204 DVD, okay, and we are not going to check the download ISO optional. We're going to browse to where this image is, which is on our desktop, surprisingly, and it's not showing. So, let's see what else we can do. Ah, let's try the 1204 desktop. There it is. Okay, I selected the wrong one. We do not want to show all drives. We just want to select drive F, which is our USB drive. And then we want to select to format that drive as well, which will erase the content. Now, we can go into my computer just to double check and make sure that that is the correct drive. Yes, it is. That is our uh, USB uh, pen drive or flash drive, whatever you want to call it. Now, at this point, if we want to, we can also create a persistent for this. This is handy for those of you who are going to be using your live USB and you want to test. Maybe you might want to install some software. This is the recommended way of, in, of trying out Ubuntu before installing on your system. So, if you're flash drive has enough space, by all means, definitely create a persistence file. Uh, let's give it about two gigs of file space. I Actually, I could even go the full four gigs because this is a 16 gig dr flash drive that I'm using here. Okay, and then we will select create. Okay, and then of course we are going to get a warning message 
will press yes. And at this point, it is going to format drive S as drive F as a FAT32, and it will go through the process. This may take a while, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. A dialog will appear showing you the progress of this disk being created. You will see here that the process has completed. Now, before seeing this progress bar going all the way to the end, it tells you that it will take some time. As a matter of fact, it took about 45 minutes to make a 4 gigabyte persistence on my 16 gig flash drive. So just be aware, this process does take a long time, but the at, you'll have the added benefit of being able to save your files on your bootable USB flash disk. Now that you have created your live CD or DVD or a live USB stick, you are ready to boot your computer into Linux for the very first time. Now, for those of you who do not know how to take the medium and boot your disk, just pay close attention when you turn on your computer. You may see a prompt for you know pressing the escape key to select boot options or press F2 or press delete or some key like this then you can either go into your BIOS setting and choose which device can boot first or you can also select boot options from a boot menu where you can choose your CD DVD drive or you could choose to boot from the USB. Unfortunately, I cannot really demonstrate this effectively in this series because hardware varies from computer to computer. But that is the one thing you will look for when you turn on your computer to pay close attention to what the text on the screen says it does flash by really fast and just press escape F2 or the delete key as the computer is booting up and you should be able to get in somewhere to where you can select your boot options now that you have your live medium ready and you want to be able to boot into Ubuntu for the very first time, there are a few considerations you're going to need to make before you install Ubuntu on your computer. And we're going to discuss that in the next episode.